let's take a tour from Armagh down to Clonus via Monaghan, following the old Armagh to Monaghan Railway, part of the old Great Northern Railway. Starting off here in, Clona in Armagh, this is the old Armagh station we're looking at. Very similar in design to the old Portadown station. That's how Portadown station used to look way back in the day, and this is how it looked in more recent times. This must have been shortly before it was demolished. You can see a certain similarity in the style of a lot of these buildings, these big grand station buildings on the Great Northern Railway. We're going to see a bit more of that today. So let's go to Armagh. And here is the site of the old Armagh station. Armagh Tile is there now. It's a thriving retail business. And I wonder if these arches that have been built into the side of the building here, I wonder if that's an allusion to the railway history of the site. And these arch structures built into the ball. I wonder if that's a little tribute to the railway that used to be on this very site. Quite interesting. Nice touch if, uh, if that's what it's for. So that's where the railway used to run. There was uh, four ways out of Armagh on the railway. You could go north up to Portadown. Or you could go east to Market Hill. These two lines merged, went through where several businesses are now, and then it split again and went south to Keady and Castle Blaney, down this way, or it split to the right and went to Monaghan and Clonus. So that's the route we're following today. And if we look at it on the historic map, yeah, <clears throat> you can see how it's split around the back of Little, where Little is now. So if you wanted to get this line reopened, really it wouldn't be impossible. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot built on top of it. I think the challenge with RMA is getting the station back into its original location. Quite a few businesses have, uh, have been built there in the meantime. But it's better for businesses to be there than people's houses. I feel like... You know, when you're getting railways reopened, businesses are easier to relocate than people's homes. People aren't as emotionally attached to businesses as they are to their homes. So businesses relocate all the time anyway, so it shouldn't be impossible. So if we got the line reopened, we could conceivably go underneath the Moy Road and pick up the old route. Uh, there are a few little places where some things have been built on top of it. But when you're in open country, you know, you could go around these obstacles, I'm sure. So let's start following the line. See where it takes us. A few farm buildings there. Let's zoom out a little. There's a crossover point. Let's see, is there anything worth looking at there? Yeah, there's the walls. There's a cutting going underneath. So here's the old bridge, still intact. Walls are all overgrown. It looks like a hedge, but it seems to be walls. They've just been overgrown by vegetation. At least I hope the walls are still there anyway. I wouldn't like to crash into that if it was just a hedge. <coughs> Fall down into the cutting below. That wouldn't be very nice. I'm not going to look at all these crossover points here. I'll just check out this one. There's the abutments of the bridge. Still in place. Magic. There must be hundreds, hundreds of these ruins all over the country from these old railways. Computer's running a bit slow today, sorry about this. Hopefully it's not gonna choke. Okay, let's keep on going. There's a few stations on the way that we're gonna check out as well. A few old stations. Let me uh, pull them up on the map actually. I wanna make sure I don't miss them because there's some really well preserved ones. Killy Lay will be the next one, so keep an eye out for Killy Lay. Elm Park Road, okay, let's keep an eye out for that. Hopefully we haven't gone past it. Elm Park Road, there it is, Killy Lay Station. And we're in for a treat here. So there's the, the walls of the old bridge. There's a wall on the other side, and let me reveal, there it is, Killy Day Station in all its glory. So much of it is still intact. 
There's the ramps leading down to the platforms. The platforms are still there. The station building, the signal box. It's almost like it's waiting for the trains to come back. Fantastic. Okay, let's keep on going. And there's another station down here as well. Uh, if I can remember what it was called. Sorry about the slow computer today. And again, I'm not going to look at all these crossing points. Okay, here's another station here, which is quite interesting. That one was called Tainan or Tainan. Forgive me for murdering the pronunciations of these places. I'm not familiar with Tainan Caledon, Middleton. Yeah, so there was a little station there, and there was a narrow gauge railway that ran up to it. Yeah. That narrow gauge railway ran up to. Caledon, quite a few stations on the Ochnacloy, and then went swung Ballygolly, and then down south down to Maguire's Bridge. There's been quite a few narrow gauge railways in Ireland. So I can't really get in there right now to get a decent photo of the place. I can't really see it from the street view, so there's not much to see there for purposes of this tour. So let's keep on going. Um, the railway gets a wee bit hard to track here. It must have been a foggy day or a misty day when this uh, satellite passed over. Because I've lost the railway. I think that's it. Yeah, there it is. I'll get down to Glasslock. I think, are we in Monaghan now? I think we are. Okay, we got down to, we're in for another treat here. This is a well-maintained little part of the world. There's the old Glasslock railway, how oh, replica railway gates have been put in here. So there's the old right-of-way where the trains used to cross over. And here is The old signal box, still in mint condition, very well maintained. And that looks like an old engine there from an hour gauge railway. Tractor from an hour gauge railway. Now the station here at Glasslock, I can't really see it from the road. I um, did manage to dig out some photos of it. It's quite an interesting design. Three big gables. I'm not sure what kind of state of repair it's in. It looks like a little shed's been built on, tacked onto the end of it. So I'm not sure who owns that now, if it's in private hands or if it's being looked after. Built in a gothic style, very unusual. Looks almost like a church. Quite interesting. Okay, let me zoom back up a little and we'll keep pressing on south. Follow this line through the fields. We're going to get into Monaghan Town here shortly. But I'm not going to stop at every crossing point. Okay, we're getting into Monaghan Town here. Let me zoom in a little. And there's another line coming in here. It merges with the... Uh, is that the Ulster Canal? I think it might be the Ulster Canal that merges in here. Uh, so the line comes down here. Uh, there's a GAA field has been built on top of it there at this point. I think you can still see the walls of the old bridge. Yeah, there it is. So I don't know if you can still walk underneath this bridge, but uh, yeah, there it is. There's where the trains used to run. To be what is now a football field. And then it went underneath what is now this commercial development here, under this roundabout. And there's the Ulster Canal. Interestingly, this part of the Ulster Canal was built, uh, I think the railways were built very shortly after the Ulster Canal was built. And the railways, as you know, made the canals obsolete as a form of commercial transport. So this Ulster Canal, this piece of the Ulster Canal was never a commercial success. It reminds me of the old phone cards that 
British Telecom produced them. They put them into all, they built all this infrastructure of putting phone cards into thousands of pay phones all over the place. And within about five years, the whole thing was obsolete because of mobile phones. So you have these little format wars and little uh, new technologies going obsolete very quickly. It's happened throughout history. So anyway, the railway goes down here. I don't think this has been very developed. I don't think there's a whole lot built on it. Uh, there's the cutting underneath. Bridge still intact. Don't know if it's been filled in underneath. There's a bit of a hospital has been built there very close to the, tr the route, but not exactly on top of it. So it wouldn't be impossible to get this route opened up again through this part. And it's a bit of a dull photo here, but from what I can tell, I really don't think a whole lot has been built on top of this track until you get as far as here where there's a, there's a little supermarket. And then this building, this gets really interesting. So this building is the old goods yard, part of the old Monaghan station. And you can walk around it here in the street view, which is cool. So there's all the old loading bays, all the horses and carts would have pulled up here and unloaded the goods and they would have been later loaded onto freight wagons on the trains for export. Remember these railways went absolutely everywhere, up to Belfast, down to Dublin, you name it, you could go anywhere from here. So I'm sure Little wouldn't mind relocating if we wanted to get our line reopened. So the trains went round the back of that freight yard through what is now a bus air and bus depot. We'll look at that in a second. And the station was here. Here's Monaghan train station. Now recall the design of the, the RMA station and the Porter Down station. A lot of similarities here, isn't there? You have these arches, you have this grand entrance staircase leading up into the building. It really, it's an imposing structure. It's a landmark. And I was a bit horrified actually when I saw the satellite photo because of the condition of the building. But there is some good news here, which is that a company has moved in. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, a company called Craft Studio has moved in. These are, <clears throat> this is an architectural firm. And if anybody appreciates the value of a building like this, it'll be a firm of architects. So it seems like since those Street View photos were taken, they have cleaned this up a little. And they've remodeled the inside and they're, they've done a really nice job actually. So I'll give you a link to that in the description. All the photos just seem to be from one end of the building. Uh, so it could be that they're just occupying this part, but I hope they're taking care of the whole thing because it's such an historic structure, really. And it wouldn't be impossible to get it reopened again as a train station. That would be phenomenal if we could achieve that. Uh, there's plaques here on the side. <clears throat> there's a plaque here and a plaque here. This one's an Irish, this one's an English. Um, gives a description of the station and the history. I can't get in close enough to read it here, so if anybody can get up close to it and <clears throat> take a picture, please uh, by all means do so. So that's a magnificent looking building. And compare that to what's just up the street from it. I mean, look at this. I mean, what can you say about a building like this? I mean, I don't know how much thought was put into this, how much effort was put into it. And I understand that budgets can be tight and so on, but come on, I think we can do better than this. Plunking a shed on the street. And where's the entrance supposed to be? How are you supposed to get into this as a pedestrian? Well, you certainly can't get in through here because there's a big sign saying no pedestrian access. So I think as a pedestrian, you know, it was very clear on the on the old station, the old train station. It was pretty clear where you go in. There's a big grand entrance right in the middle. You can't miss it. Here, enter here from the street, and you have to scuttle in through this side door to the tradesman's entrance. I think what they're expecting people to do here is to drive up in their cars and drive in. And this entrance is just added as an afterthought. So this is a building that just doesn't really participate in the life of the street. It turns its back on the street. I think we can do a bit better than this, don't you? I mean, this section here looks like a bit more thought has been put into it, but it's still, still ignoring the street. 
I'm going to go hideous. Okay. Let's press on. <clears throat> so the station was here, and we can see from the side. So where the tracks used to be is now this shed has been built on top of it. And then looking out to where the trains used to run to the west. And you can see some houses have been built on top. A lot of houses have been built here, actually. There's been an entire housing development. So, you know, the planners haven't really made it easy for us to get this line reopened. There's a whole row of houses that look like they're built, uh, built near as Damon on top of the tracks. Or else very close to them. On the other hand, we should be able to make a bit of a diversion here and get around these houses. And get the line reopened. Shouldn't be a problem. Because we don't want to demolish people's homes to get railways reopened. As soon as you try to demolish homes to get a railway reopened, you immediately generate opposition to the project. And we don't want that. We want people to support the reopening of railways. Here's a business that's been built on top of the tracks again. Don't know why they needed to do that, but there it is. I guess they just weren't expecting anyone to consider the railways making a comeback. And you'll see quite a few structures built on top of this route, actually. But we're in open country, so... Maybe we can get around them. It's just it would have been nice to be able to recycle the old cuttings and the old embankments without having to build them all again on a separate route. That's all. Crossover point here. Is there anything to see? The other buttons of the bridge still in place. Why is my mouse not working so well? Let me try it. Different pad. That's better. Yeah, the old the buttons of the bridge are still in place. Very cool. Be nice if they could be incorporated into a reopened structure. So there's quite a few crossings here. I'm not going to look at all of them. I'll let you do that in your own time. And um, yeah, let's press on down to Clonus then. I don't know if there's any more stations to look at between here and Clonus. Let me just back up a little. Glasslock would have been there. Monaghan would have been there. Smith Brothers a station. Now we get into Clonus, okay. So let's press on, press on all the way down to Clonus. And this is where the land disappears. This must be very productive land here because it seems to have all been returned to agricultural use. Hence the tracks disappear. Oh, here they are. Reappears here. Some buildings built on top of it. Highly visible landscape features. It fades in and fades out. Drops off here, and I think we're starting to come into Clonus here. So there's a big line of buildings built on top of the tracks. That's okay. We can get around then. We're in open country here. I think this row of hedges here is the only visible indication of where the trains used to be at this point. And now we get into, yeah, the line used to cross over here through the middle of what is now this um, manufacturing business, I think. There's some industrial stuff in here, some light industry, where the tracks used to be. The tracks used to cross over this street here, Church Hill. Used to, and the station was in here. We'll talk about this building in a second, but I want to look at the street view from here. Turn around. There's where the street the trains used to cross over. Used to cross over nearly exactly here. And let me show you an old photo of Clonus. 
there it is, the same view. There's the church, this building, this building. There's the church, this building, and this building, all in the same location. Love old and new contrasts like this. So this was a really busy place, the signal box long gone now. So the trains used to run across here and into the station, which was in there. All right, let's take a look at the station then. <clears throat> the problem with the Google Street View here is we can't really get a very clear view of the station. This is all, it's too built up. There's uh, walls, hedges and trees and stuff in the way. So I can't really see in and I can't get a good look at how much of the old station is still visible. It's still intact. One thing that's definitely intact though is this semi-circular building here. This is an old engine shed. I believe a railway roundhouse is another word for it. So this would have been a circular shed with a turntable in the middle, middle and all the old steam locomotives. You would <clears throat> put them on the turntable, rotate it to the appropriate position and roll them back into the garage. And there would be inspection pits underneath. Mechanics could work at the old steam engines and then uh, roll them back out onto the National Railway Network. So I wonder how many of those buildings are still intact. There's a photo of the old Clonus uh, Railway Station, or not a, a drawing of the old station. It looked like a fairly major building. And there's a photo of it back in the steam train days. So this was a pretty major, major um, junction because the railway went out of here in four different directions. It went out to um, it went out to it went north to Enniskillen. If you kept going west, it would turn up north, and go up to Enniskillen. South, it would go to Cavan Town. North, it would go to Armagh, and then east, it would go down to Castle Blaney and Dundalk. So Clonus was a significant railway junction in those days, and uh, as you can see here, a lot of the right of way is pretty open. You know, there are industrial facilities here which are easier to relocate than people's homes. So if we wanted to get the railway reopened again through Clonus, I think that is, it is achievable. Businesses are easier to relocate than houses, so. But again, it's not cheap. What it all boils down to is how much are you willing to spend on railways? You know, there's the old line going down to Castle Blaney. There's the barely visible line going up to Armagh, where we just came from. And I can, I think I see the line to Enniskillen going here. And there's the other one going south to, um, to Cavan Town. But think of the potential here, you know, on match days, if there's a big match at St. Chernick's Park, and all the fans from Armagh coming down on the train it would be a lot less congested on the roads, a lot safer on the roads too. So governments really need to prioritise rail over roads. They're willing to spend vast amounts of money on road projects, which in my opinion don't provide a huge economic benefit. Rail projects have a far bigger benefit. But uh, yeah, getting that railway reopened through Monaghan Town, down to Clonus, definitely achievable in my opinion.